My name is Justin. Um, I'm retired Army. I did 12 years uh, as a Signal Corps. Um, my job was a 25 Quebec line of sight. I def deployed uh, three times. Over the three deployments, the uh, there was no just one significant event that I think gave me PTSD. It was the, the culmination of the three tours. Um, I mean, I took mortars like everybody else. I was on a FOB. Uh, I was there for the SCUDs. We helped detainees uh, carrying dead bodies if we had to. I mean, we did what we had to. On my third tour, I was walking. I remember walking across the, the, the field. It was at night. And all of a sudden, I had this rush over me. And I didn't know what was happening. I mean, I, I got scared. I hit the ground. I didn't know what was going on. I mean, I had an anxiety attack, but I, it never happened before. I went and talked to somebody, and they were like, you know, just, you'll be OK. Here, take a couple of these, and you know, there you go. I talked to a couple of you know, soldiers or other fellow NCOs about it, but we just had to push it to the side. When I got home is when the effects of PTSD you know, started really coming out, you know, being hypervigilant. I mean, I was drinking. Everybody drinks when they get home, but when you're drinking a 12-pack to 18 beers a night, not showing up to work the next day, I mean, you just kind of lose sense of reality. I went through rehab twice. The first time, I was just there because the command told me to be there. Um, when my drinking got so out of hand, then it, it wasn't working, I turned to drugs. I started doing cocaine, and then finally I had a come to Jesus moment, and said, I can't do this anymore. I went back to rehab, and I've been drug free since 2009. I went up to the hospital, and I told them not, you know, I was having a lot more issues than what I let on. So anytime I went to talk to a therapist, I just told them what they wanted to hear. I was hurting my family. I was hurting my, my, my military service. Um, and they, they, they saw that. A lot of them saw that. And they even helped try, or they had, had me moved to a different battalion and everything, and it still didn't work. I finally got moved into a warrior transition unit. The WTU was mainly there just for those soldiers, you know, that couldn't deploy, but didn't have a regular job. Finally, it came down to me either getting um, forced out or a retirement. And it went in front of the, the commanding general, and I got retired. When I got out, um, I want to say that I was doing better, but I actually got worse. Um, me and my wife at the time, we lost our, our apartment, moved in with some friends, then I lost my job. Uh, that's when I finally moved to Houston. And when I moved to Houston, you know, I was living with my parents. I have my child and my wife with me, trying to get a job, and I, I finally landed one. And that's when life started looking up. I had actually got in contact with uh, the AW2 project, or the Ar Army Wounded Transition um, Program. And they helped me realize, you know, certain things that you, I mean, you're gonna have to always remember you're a veteran. You can't just suppress it. Once you find a group, you know, that you can identify with, you, you start realizing that you're not the only one out there that wakes up angry, you know, that gets into just a rage for no reason. I've done counseling sessions when I got out of the military through uh, the VA. And, you know, it, with any counselor, you just have to find someone that you connect with. And I found one in, in uh, Houston. She helped me realize, one, yeah, you can have PTSD even though you didn't get blown up, you didn't kill anybody. I mean, anybody can develop it. It's not because, I mean, you, you're not a less of a person because these guys have lost a limb or they got shot or they got blown up. You, you can still develop it. My symptoms from PTSD from when I was first diagnosed till now is, I mean, I still have them, I still notice them. Just through the counseling, you have identifiers that you can initially just think about, um, and you can use your coping mechanisms that they teach you. The hypervigilance hyper is still there, but not as bad. I mean, I don't have to lock every door in my house three times to know that I'm safe. I don't have a shotgun behind every door anymore. My daughter is, she's my world, just along, along with my son. I mean, right now I'm a stay-at-home dad, and, uh, it's great to wake up with them every day. You know, my wife works. It's it's challenging, <laughs> but 
it's something that I missed. You know, my son, when I left for Iraq and he was eight months old and I get home, he's almost two. And when I got home, he grabbed onto me and he hasn't let go since. And my daughter is the same. Having that connection with my family has is, is been great for me. I mean, when I moved to Houston, I had just my mom, dad, and my, my wife. And then I've met a couple friends and now I've got 30 people I can call on. Um, and that's the importance of getting with not just one organization, but many, finding the one that you can make a connection with and grow from there.